Hello and welcome to 25 Concepts in Anthropology, where I, Nicholas Herriman, take you through what I think are the top 25 concepts in anthropology. Each one of these concepts opens up a new vista on what it is to be human. And today we're going to look at one of my favourite concepts and that is reciprocity. Reciprocity is basically the distribution of good and goods and services based on principles of gift giving, not based on the principles of the market or capitalism. A classic example of reciprocity comes from Malinowski's research on the Trobriand Islands. Here, fishermen give fish to the uh, inland community, and in return, the inland community on the islands gives vegetables to the fishermen. So this is a simple act of reciprocity, a gift and then another gift. A gift from A to B, a gift from B to A a gift from the fishermen to the inland villages, a gift from the inland villages to the fishermen. Now, when, when we look at reciprocity, the best way to think about it then is gift giving, gift giving. We tend to think of uh, gifts as something which are given voluntarily and given in a disinterested and, uh, let's say, humane way. But anthropology teaches us there's no such thing as a true gift. The true gift is, if you like, a kind of lie we tell ourselves. It's important uh, for our society to work. So in theory, gifts are given voluntarily, but actually in practice, it is obligatory to give gifts and it's also obligatory to reciprocate gifts. And this is what we mean by reciprocity. Uh, a simple example is if I give you, viewer, a Christmas card next Christmas, you will feel some obligation to give me a Christmas card. Um, same if your uh, friend's birthday is coming up, they gave you a birthday present last time, it's supposed to be free and whatever, you will give them one back. Now the, the interesting thing with this is, when, when you give the gift back, you'll also try to calculate, well, how much was that gift really worth? You know, if your friend gave you uh, a flat screen plasma TV, which is worth, I don't know, one month's pay, you can't really just give him for his birthday a book or a tie or a pair of socks. So we, we, there's, there's, a, there's an obligation, if you like, to try and get it right. I'll give you one more example. Just say you watch this video and you really like it and you, and you write a comment, you know, great video, Nick, and I think, oh, wow, that's very nice. So I send you a golden watch that's worth thousands and thousands of dollars. It's worth two months' pay. and then I come to visit your city and ask you to come over and, and visit me. Now, you might not come and visit me, you might think I'm a freak, but you will still feel some obligation. That is what it is to be human, in fact, to feel some sort of obligation after you receive a gift. It, this seems to be a universal in human societies. Now, gift giving is separate to, is distinct from like purchasing. The ultimate purchase for me within the capitalist system is when I drive down the freeway, um, not the freeway, sorry, down a tollway, and there are these automatic sensors that sense my car and take money from my account. I've never interacted with anybody. There's no human in interaction. It's a, it's, a, it's a pure system. I take something that is the service of a tollway, it takes something from me, money. This is a perfect, if you like, purchase or a capitalist transaction. The transactions of gift giving are far more personable. And the important thing about them is that they bind people and things to get together. In other words, reciprocity, the distribution of goods and services based on the principle of gift giving, binds people and things together. The famous example was given by Maus, a um, French sociologist, and he talked about Hau, H-A-U, Hau. Hau, excuse me as I pick up my pen, um, refers to something like spirit. Uh, you give me, you viewer give me a gift, a Christmas card. With that Christmas card comes Hau, a spirit, and I, and the spirit gets transferred to me. If I don't give you a gift back, that spirit will haunt me. 
but by giving it back to you, the, the, the how returns to its owner, that is you. So you give me a gift, I take the gift, and with it I take some how, which is um, a Maori word. So the Maoris are the indigenous people of New Zealand for spirit. That spirit stays with me until I give you a gift back and then it returns to you. This is the way Mao saw it. Some people disagreed and said no, Mao actually misunderstood it. But in, actually as an analytical idea it's quite useful. Um, another famous example comes from Clifford, so we just looked at Mao's. But another famous example comes from Clifford Geertz and his work on a ritual meal called Slamadan amongst the Javanese. And basically this is a meal where you invite your neighbours and family, you share uh, food amongst yourselves and with the spirits who are around the house and the village. And by doing that, uh, by that sharing, it brings everything together into a state of peace and freedom from uh, misfortune, which is actually known as Slamat. Slama. Okay, now there are three kinds of reciprocity according to another uh, author by the name of Salins. Um, the first kind is generalized. Uh, if you invite me to your children's part, birthday parties and I give them presents every year till they turn 18, 19, 20, and then uh, I have children and invite you to my parties, I expect you to give them presents, right? But I also, as your, as your children grow older, I expect them to give my children presents, maybe of, of a general similar value. That example wasn't too good, I'll give you another one and it's even simpler. Uh, generalized reciprocity typically occurs between generations. Parents give their children things like education, house, sorry, no, not house, education, food, clothing, etc. Parents don't, ex don't take a tally of everything that they've given and then expect their children to give them back the exact amount. It's more general as the parents get older they expect help, assistance, etc. Et from their children. So that's generalised reciprocity. Specific reciprocity occurs amongst Australian, particularly Australian males at the pub when we talk about doing uh, a round. So I go with five friends, the first round is mine. I shout them a drink, I, uh, I treat them to a free beer. So that was my round. The next round is, is friend number two, friend number three, friend number four, friend number five, that's back to me as friend number one to buy a round. And this way we share it around, but you know, I can't leave if I'm the last guy, <laughs> you know, friend number four can't just leave before he's bought us a round, or that'd be quite rude. Um, so this, because it would, it would infringe with our ideas of specific reciprocity. The last uh, specific, the second type, are we still on camera, more or less? Specific. And the last kind is negative. And this is quite simple. Um, if somebody punches you, you punch them back. If somebody steals something from you, you steal something back. That's negative reciprocity. You're giving something bad, if you like. You're giving something bad, and that returns that. So they're the three kinds of reciprocity uh, that Salins identified. Um, reciprocity is particularly associated with ritual meals. I've already mentioned the Slamatan, but the more famous one is one called Potlatch. And this is famous uh, from another anthropologist by the name of Boaz. Boaz wrote about potlatch, potlatch among the Kwakutl Indians from around Vancouver. Now this is a, a, a huge ritual feast which involves, um, you could call it a frenzy of giving. In fact people get so extravagant with their gifts that sometimes chiefs will pick up blankets and burn them to show their extravagance and wealth and display. Um, and we have similar things at weddings or, you know, sometimes we have champagne sprays, champagne showers, um, and this kind of stuff. So this is the, the basic idea of uh, reciprocity. It's a, a gift giving which binds people closer and closer together. And it's very different from the kind of interaction which is associated 
with uh, transactions based around market and capitalism. Um, it's often when, when anthropology lecturers give the lecture on gift giving, it's often called the lecture which ruins Christmas because suddenly what appeared to many students as a uh, re expression of, of humanity and of generosity in fact suddenly becomes quite clear it's, it's, it's a uh, it's an obligate it's obligatory to give gifts to share the meal that the ritual meal of Christmas it's obligatory to give gifts but this also ties um, people together so in conclusion reciprocity is one of the most important concepts in anthropology it's one that we frequently misunderstand because we we persist uh, for very important reasons to think that there is such a thing as a true gift. Um, however, anthropologists dispute that idea. And as we've shown, reciprocity is obligatory. And for us, that's a good thing. It's a good thing that gift giving is obligatory because gift giving or reciprocity actually draws people together. Okay, thank you for listening to this concept. Stay tuned for more.